Welcome back to Let's Have It Out. Yusuf, I want to give you the opportunity to finish up what you were saying, because I think it's, it's a very important point. Sure, thank you very much. I mean, what I was saying is that you need to have more meaningful proposals. It's just a, it's just a suggestion. This is not an attack yeah. uh, on you guys, uh, so please don't take it personally. But I think you need to have some more meaningful proposals. So as an example, our education system isn't working. Young people are not being prepared for the workplace. That's the problem. You don't fix the problem. You're not going to be able to, you can try and manufacture a solution, you're not going to be able to fix uh, the problem that we have. We need to ensure that our education system includes experience as part, uh, practical work experience as part of uh, the, the skills training, whether it's vocational skills or part of our education system. That's just one example. But you let's, asked, uh, let, let's hear from one of our viewers. Here, all right? So Cello on Facebook says, if I had a company, I would never hire someone without experience. Imagine a doctor or an accountant with no experience. That's a disaster. These are entry jobs that don't require experience. People want good paying jobs while they're fresh from grade 12 or varsity. People complain about experience, but they will never volunteer to gain that experience. Thank you, Cello, for that comment. Now, what Cello has mentioned is specific careers which have set out paths right, um, for a young person. So you become a doctor, you're required to do internship, community service. Sure. Kansas got to do training contracts, which is a very specific set out path that's been created by professions, yeah? But I'm a matric graduate, yeah? Um, I have a lot of social media skills. I can potentially be absorbed into a company because I understand how Twitter works, I understand how Facebook works. I can add real value in a company's social media department, yeah? But that person is excluded by the economy, by barriers such as transportation, data, um, experience, um, non-ring fencing of jobs, right? We're saying that let it be legislation that the public sector and the private sector advertises jobs between the ages of 18 and 35, specifically for those people. Let the private sector advertise jobs with a specific focus to employ unemployed. And many countries have employed the system of on-the-job training, right? But there seems this unwillingness to be able to do this absorption into the market. So, well, what's your viewpoint on that? Sure, I mean, I hope I have enough time to answer this because uh, you've been cutting me off, uh, yeah. uh, Wasim, but it's fine. I, I mean, I agree with you. These are specific uh, professions that I've been referred to. There is experience that are part of the career path, whether it's a doctor, whether it's an accountant like yourself, you have to go into articles and so forth. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is if you, for example, are going to become a electrician, as an example, as part of your training, you should be able to get experience. You shouldn't be sitting in the classroom for your two years or three years uh, of training. Or whether or not uh, you're going to be in school, as an example. Why should our school system be so outdated to the point where we are just sitting in classrooms, uh, uh, getting a lecture from a teacher in a class of hundreds, 200, and so forth, and young people are not being prepared for the workplace. What you're trying to do is superficially manufacture an outcome which has never, ever worked. It's not worked in any government policy that has tried to superficially manufacture an outcome. What you need to do is you need to fix the problem at its root. You need to manufacture a solution for young people as they are being prepared for the economy. You need to make sure that they are prepared for the economy. and At the same time, you need to make sure that you remove the barriers that prevent them. So you mentioned transport, you mentioned data. It's why we've introduced uh, or proposed a job seekers allowance. In the city of Cape Town, the DA is governing. Job seekers can ride the My City bus for free. We definitely care about, as a party, and where we are in government, we care about removing the barriers for unequal access to opportunity. Because you're correct, our history means that some people have the opportunity to access opportunity and others don't. Sure. When we talk about data, that's a whole other story. Sure. Let's, uh, but, yeah. let's, the DA is also proposed to do away with triple B legislation, which has contributed towards a growing black middle class. But let's take no, a that's, call. That's not, let's that's take, not accurate. Let's take Chusta from Kundu on the line. That's naughty. Hi, Chusta. What is your question or comment? Okay, thanks. No, my, my oil. Uh, very well, thanks. And you? I'm fine. No, my, my, my first issue is that is the visibility of, an, of the National Youth Development Agency in rural areas. Our small towns, uh, the, the, it, it, it's not there. And now, how can young people now start to be interested in entrepreneurial issues if the one in NYK is not visible? For example, in Kumbu, Tolo, Makli, and other small towns, you, you don't find it. You'll find it in Amtata and all those big towns. So what is the program of the NYK making it more visible? Okay, you know? thank you very much.
much for that, Chuster. Um, the NYD, when its new board of directors was appointed, brought this issue of accessibility of the agency. We know that the most impoverished and the most insignificant issues, or the most significant issues, lie in rural areas. And we are aware that our presence lies mainly in metropolitan areas. That is why the NYD has set itself a target on its annual performance plan, which is monitored by Parliament, to establish an office in at least every district municipality come March 2020. We believe that increasing access to products and services such as entrepreneurship and jobs can substantially Im improve the lives of young people in rural areas. We've also started to procure mobile outreach vehicles which can move into deep-lying rural areas um, to be able to take government services directly to young people. We continue to be on the lookout for additional funding um, to increase. Um, recently, we've been granted additional funding from the Jobs Fund, um, which can allow us to increase our grant program and make a more meaningful contribution, especially to rural young people. Yeah, uh, let's come back to you, Yusuf. Um, what is your view no, on, sorry, on before, accessibility sorry, of government before services? Before you continue, I mean, yeah. it's, the show is let's have it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, made a, you made a comment before you went to uh, Kusa, which is, which is, I think, a little bit... Uh, I mean, you don't do that. You don't make a comment. You yeah. allow a person to respond, and then you go to your caller, yeah, yeah. right? So the DA w wants to do away with the uh, black economic empowerment. That's incorrect. It's patently incorrect. What the DA wants to do away with is ANC-style black economic empowerment, where we say, Wasim, you are a, 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 a black beneficiary. Let's give you 50 million rand worth of shares in a company, and therefore black people are empowered. That's the difference. We believe in black economic empowerment, but not that which is going to create billionaires, but black economic empowerment that is going to, to, to benefit ordinary South Africans, particularly young people that you, you suggest that you want to assist. But, but the DA has flip-flopped on policy issues for a length of time. It's the, the truth of the matter is that the DA, Which federal executive, issues? cannot agree on the, the triple B. I'm part of the federal executive. Cannot the federal agree on the triple B The federal policy. executive made a decision. It communicated its decision. Because, because the DA is set out to protect white minority interests oh my in God. the country. Right? And, and that is the <laughs> underlying. If we look at how the city of Cape Town is governed, um, wow. if we look at the discrepancies between Kailicha and even recently the issues in the Borka, you know, uh, you we know, look at I the see, sale of I land. Look, we had to um, speak about young people, but what I find quite troubling, yeah. I know Stiso was supposed to interview me here today. I actually wish he was here. Maybe we would have had a more professional interview. Manufacturing, you know, propaganda, ANC propaganda, is not your job as a CEO of the NYDA, right? You're an official of government. Coming here on, on national television and trumpeting untrue propaganda, it's not your job. We but, have to but, talk but, about, but, let's but, talk but, about but, factual but, matters. But these are reported no. items, right? A lot of things are reported. Uh, apparently, <laughs> Zuma was reported to become the finance minister. It doesn't mean you're going to come and trumpet it because it wasn't true. But, but you didn't okay. deny it either, right? The DA has not come out with a clear set of saying, of saying this is what our triple B policy is. And young people need to know that, actually, right? Because actually, we yeah. have many young black professionals who are cut out, right? There are many young black professionals who have spoken out? in the city uh, of Cape Town how they feel completely excluded. Yeah. By what, about, the majority. What, about young, what about young black professionals that are excluded in, in uh, Etequini, in Durban? But is there's that a, because of the ANC? But, I mean, there's, a, but there's, there's a real narrative. There's a real narrative. Exactly, it's a narrative. I refuse, I refuse but it's not your job to sell a narrative on the show. It's your job to interview me. It, it's our narrative yeah. to... Whose narrative? The NYDA's narrative. To take research and to determine how we can craft policy and legislation to better respond. So let's talk about research. Let's talk about where jobs are being created, right? In the Western Cape, on average, 100,000 jobs have been created per year. In President Cyril Ramaphosa's first 100 days in office, 250,000 additional South Africans were added to the ranks of the unemployed. Since then, that has skyrocketed, right? Let's go. Let's go. So, We've got to go to an ad break. Okay. We'll come back to employment figures as soon as we come back. We take more of your questions and comments after the break.